Welcome to Grow My Etsy Shop podcast, the drips of knowledge you need to start growing. Hey, welcome. All right, I have a question for you. How many of you have someone in your life right now that's being let go, that was fired from their job, that their company is moving in another direction, that they've been laid off? How many of you know someone in your life personally that you can name by name that that's happened to since January? I bet a lot of you say, yeah, I know, I know someone, I got someone, maybe it's even personal. Yeah, my husband, myself. Now, this is not a unique thing that's happening in 2024. In fact, uh, most of the bigger companies that are out here are doing something kind of unique in 2024. Now, this comes off of the wave of what you know we saw from COVID. When kind of COVID started to creep into our lives, this weird spending started to take place. People got locked in their homes and then the spend surge took place and then we started sending aid and things and money prints and all that. All. Don't need to get political here, but essentially what happened is inflation moved up, right? Now, here's what we tend to do in these situations. We tend to, n- humans don't like change. We don't like that kind of stuff. So we don't like to change what we're doing. So we try to press through what the reality is in order to keep our lives as normal as possible. 2023, I believe, was sort of the last year that we tolerated pressing through as normal as possible. And I am seeing a shift in behavior from shoppers. I'm seeing a a shift in the behavior of the people I'm trying to market to. I'm seeing a shift in the behavior of large businesses who are shifting what they're seeing as well. Here's what they're seeing. In 2024, people are looking, are feeling like they're spending too much money. It's a good way to say it. So when, you know, hey, I've been living a certain way. For example, I just had a conversation with someone the other day who um, they eat keto, him and his wife eat keto, and he has two little kids, I think a four-year-old and a two-year-old or something like that. And they spend a thousand dollars a month in food. And of course, when he said that, I was like, dude, that's really expensive. And he said, I know, I've just kind of been shopping the same way I've been shopping. And now I'm starting to see like, okay, I got to make a change here. That mindset right there is what I see across the board, including businesses. So yes, if you have know someone who's been laid off, that's essentially what's happening is people are just becoming, I think the way that we can coin it is that it's the year of profitability. So instead of looking at the priority of growth, a lot of businesses are looking at becoming more profitable in what they're doing. And so there's a lot of cuts that are taking place. And I think people are sort of doing the same thing. They're saying, I need to, I need more income. And the way I'm going to get more income is by cutting back a bit of how I spend, be more conscious of how I'm spending my money. Now, if you're a shop owner, this could be a scary sentence for you, right? You could be saying, wait a second. I don't want people to think that way. I want people to just have excess cash that they're burning through, that they're bored out of their mind, that they're throwing my direction. So this, and and I'm going to tell you this right now, this, I'm not saying you're dead in the water. I'm not saying this is the end, close your shop, game over. What I am saying is we just need to see this and change the way we present ourselves so that we don't fall victim to, "Ah, I don't need that type stuff. So let's talk about how that will look. So this may come as a shock. But I, in 2024, I don't have a Prime membership. I also d- have never downloaded or bought anything off of Timu or whatever that's called. Now, my reason for this is I'd like to get on my high horse here and tell you why I'm amazing. <laughs> no, I lived outside of the United States for a long time, for almost four years, and that stuff wasn't available to me. So I got used to life without that kind of stuff and found that I'm more conscious when I, am, when I have to wait for things. It, it helps avoid the well, I get the instant gratification of buying something. Um, so I do better in that scenario. Now, here's something I really appreciate about Etsy in general. Well, for a while, it was looking like Etsy was shifting towards an Amazon-type feel. The more I, I read what Josh is the CEO of Etsy and what he has to say and what he believes in the vision he has for Etsy, it isn't to become Amazon which I'm grateful for because I think we're seeing a lot of similarities at the moment and we're feeling like we're kind of getting beat up. I don't know if it's, I'm just hopeful. But here's essentially what he has to say. He says, yeah, there's other marketplaces out there that'll charge you two cents less than the same exact product and be one hour faster in shipping and that's who people end up going to and buying towards. And I don't want to be that. I want to be a place that 
you can get items that you can't get on Amazon because there's people who are spending the time to make things that are awesome. I love that thought. I think that part of the issues that we're having with with Etsy right now is that there's 7 million buyers or sellers on Etsy and there's no barrier that's stopping people from from opening their store. Do you know what I think would be amazing for Etsy to do? I think they should Etsy should charge $300 to open a shop. Ooh. What do you think I think? <laughs> yeah, I think if you said to someone, "Hey, 300 bucks to open a shop," it would allow people to be more conscious of what they were doing and invested in 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 getting it to work instead of kind of the um well, A would jack up profits cuz just do $300 times 7 million and there you go. Not saying there'd be 7 million people joining, you know, with $300. I think there'd be less people joining, but I think that's part of what Etsy sellers want, right? Don't we want a little bit less competition? Isn't that good for us? And don't we want people who are more intentful with what they're going to sell and have more of a business model than people who are just going to kind of throw things up and try to steal from other people or whatnot? I do think it would genuinely help people make more money on Etsy. And ultimately, when people have more money, they can give a better experience to what they're doing. For example, I can invest in pictures when I'm making money. I can I can be more confident with my return when I'm making more money. It's when I'm not making a lot of money that I'm going to be way more picky with my returns <laughs> or when I'm going to be kind of cheap with my photography. And so I believe that having less would solve a lot of these problems, but no one's asked me for my opinion. Now let's get back to this. So from our standpoint and what we're trying to accomplish, we have this vision of not being Amazon, okay? Which is good that we have, we're have we on a platform that's promoting this. Now let's take this one step further. Josh has also said that he doesn't, that he's, they're currently working on the algorithm to promote more of what people will love compared to what people will buy. Now that is, may sound like a confusing sentence, but it's a beautiful sentence because the difference between what someone will love and what someone will buy is different. When we're looking to buy things or it's when we feel, mm, let's not get super down that subject. Let's just leave it at this. When you, when the algorithm will promote things that people will love, it means it's going to take things in like the, the, the user experience at the end of it. So instead of just saying, hey, this is selling, let's promote, let's promote, let's promote, it instead becomes, well, what are the review ratios to this? And what are they saying in these reviews? And how is this seller? And what are they doing? It will help put more accountability on the sellers, um, which you, I know as a seller, you may be thinking, well, no, that, Jared, that's not what I want. I, you know, I don't want to see it in my butt. No, no, no. We don't want to compete. And there's a lot of you who are competing against people who are undercutting you and taking your products or selling stuff off of <laughs> that's not handmade and are coming after you. And if you've ever set foot on Amazon, you're going to see how fast your competition devours you like a vulture. The minute you get on there, people just start gunning for you and taking everything that they pick you apart like a vulture. Etsy has a little bit more protection in that. And with something like this, it's going to come down to sellers focusing more on creating a positive experience for their buyers and really being active in that so that they can get rewarded in the algorithm. And then that's how they beat their competition. So it doesn't become, so think of it this way. If someone's offering a cheaper product, but you offer a better experience, in theory, you would beat them in the algorithm. Now, doesn't that sound more tangible to you? If I had to say to you, look, you can either cut your prices or increase your value. Wouldn't you rather increase your value than cut your prices? So I really like that direction. I like that Etsy's held true to this and isn't just kind of quietly becoming Amazon. I think this is a pro for us. So, but let's let's get back to what we need to discuss here, which is, hey, if people are a little bit more profitable, we'll call it, trying to be a little bit more profitable by saving money, what can we do as an Etsy shop? Some advice that I would give is to follow suit with what others are doing. So if other businesses right now who have way more resources and way more forecast are sort of tightening up a bit and becoming profitable in what they're doing, I invite you to do the same thing. So go ahead and take some time to look at your, what you're doing and to evaluate. To, and again, if we, like, nobody likes to change. 
So I like my suppliers. I like what I'm doing. I like where I get my stuff. I like this. But it might be a good time to say, can I get that stuff for cheaper? Could I get that stuff in volume? If I bought it in bulk, could I get it for this way? What if I went more this direction? Would this save me some time or some money? This would be a great thing to do because, again, it's what businesses are doing right now to help keep their profits up is by like, hey, let's just spend a little bit less and then that's extra money in our, in our, in our pockets. Okay, so that one is pretty straightforward. Go do those things. The next one that's a little bit more, um, a little bit more work is what can we be doing to sell during this time where people are going to be a little bit more selective with how they spend their money? The biggest piece of advice I can give you is to follow exactly what Josh, the CEO of Etsy, had to say, which is, People aren't not spending money. No, in fact, billions of dollars are being spent on Etsy. and Their profit is huge. There is a lot of people. I, I hope that you're not hearing this podcast and thinking, oh no, I'm, I'm referring to growth. There is still record high number of money being moved through Etsy. So you are in a very good place to make a lot of money. Don't hear me saying this isn't thing. I'm only referring to when it comes to growth. I do think it'll be a little bit more challenging this year as people start to navigate this new mindset. That's all I'm saying, okay? Now, all we need to do is match the mindset. And if we match the mindset, we're good. The mindset is becoming more, I'm gonna be selective with what I'm buying. This puts more pressure on, I need to make sure that I properly properly sell my product to the right people. I need to make sure that I do the things as a seller that's important to people who are going to be a little bit uh, more attached to their, to their money than they typically would, okay? Super simple. Be authentic, and I agree with Josh in this, so hear, hear me out on this. I think things like if you can increase the uh, or your return policy and things like this, like being more generous in that area. A, I think it's going to pay off for you in the algorithm. B, I think it's the shift that people are going. They are a little bit more afraid to spend. And when we're afraid to spend, that's the fear we address. So it's, hey, why isn't someone buying from me today? Why are people clicking and not buying? And I would say in the years past, the mindset has been more, well, maybe there's someone cheaper than you. Maybe there's this or that. And I feel like, it's starting to shift towards more of a fear of, am I going to get my money's worth? And that is a great problem to solve and be in because that is just pure how you lay yourself up. So if I owned an Etsy shop in 2024, I would this year become more profitable through saving on what I'm doing. And this is a big one. And I don't know why my gut's telling me this, but my gut's telling me this. I would up my photo game. I would make sure that my photos are really great. I would want to look, because if something about the way, I, when I was reading what Josh had to say, it sunk in with me of, you want the experience to be better. You want someone's experience on Etsy to be positive. And it starts with the pictures. And then moves into how fast can they get their product to do they love their product and are they coming back and returning to Etsy. And that starts with that photo. I do believe that photos will start to get a priority in algorithms, that nicer photos will do better. And so that's another spot that I'm going to be hitting on. If I have a fear that, I'm a, that I might be getting a cheap product and I see excellent photos, does that fear go away? Yes. It's the same reason if you go to a clunky website and it's like, hey, I'm looking to get a therapist. And then you go on this website and it's as clunky as can be. You'd be like, ooh, I don't know how I feel about this. But if the website's really clean and, and, and easy to navigate and speaks to you and is relevant to you, you would be like, okay, I feel confident. I feel good about this. And that's essentially what we, how we can battle the market when people are a little bit more apprehensive. So it's like, Sure, I sell, and you guys know this, I'm, I do coaching with people. So I just have to present myself as like, hey, I'm not trying to be the cheapest coach that's ever been out there. 
I'm instead trying to say, look, I'm going to get you the results that you're looking for. And this is how I coach. This is how I relate. And people can say, hey, uh, that's what I want. This is what I'm going to connect with. I feel like my money's going to a good program as opposed to I'm really scared of this program. I hope this is going to work, but it's the cheapest one out there. I do feel like there's a shift in that. So that's it. <laughs> that's where my thoughts are. I think that ultimately if it was me, I would fall down to, look, I'm going to be, I am going to kind of follow suit with what people are doing and I'm, and I'm going to save some money, which is going to be good for me in that area. But how am I going to grow this year? I think I'm going to grow through being better at selling my product. And so my process of selling is where I want to work. I want to work on presenting myself so that my experience with people can be great. Now, in the next little while here, maybe we can talk more about like, hey, how do we get reviews and what does that look like and that kind of stuff. How do we get people to say certain words? Because that's a big part of this as well. Like when we say something, we don't want, you know, I don't, I appreciate everyone who ever leaves reviews. But when someone leaves a review that says item as described, that doesn't help us at all. (laughs) That doesn't help someone make, I mean, it's nice when you can be like, look, I've got five stars, but it doesn't help someone make a buying decision. What makes someone make a buying decision is where they see what their life was before and what their life is with the product. And that's what we want people to do. So how do we train people to do that? Maybe we talk about that next week. Okay. Until next week. See ya.